So we inherited a few clients that have Synology surveillance stations, and it wasn't a product I was already familiar with. And this goes back uh, almost two years now, and we've watched these systems get better and better with updates. We were really impressed with the way the system worked and how reliable it's been for the couple clients that we have it. Uh, we also did a lot of installs where we were contracted by someone else uh, who was putting these in a bunch of fast food places and we did the physical layer. We found these really easy to set up. So we also deployed a few to our clients and they've worked really well for our deployments and they're not too hard to set up. And so I wanted to do a review of both one, using it for a little while with a few clients and two, what you need to get started with the surveillance station. Now the surveillance station software comes with your Synology server, or you can also buy a Synology dedicated NVR that has HDMI out because the standard surveillance station, such as the one we have here, the DS918 Plus, doesn't have an HDMI out for video. And this is a request that comes up all the time. A lot of people like to have like that TV wall mount display where they have all the TVs displayed or all the surveillance cameras displayed on the TV, I should say. Now, the other tools we're gonna to be using here are currently a real link right here, camera and a Amcrest camera. I'm gonna do a review of these cameras separate. They're not bad. Um, the real links I like a lot. The Amcrest is a inexpensive uh, pan tilt camera that I think is has its use case. Uh, but like I said, I'm gonna do separate reviews of those. And I'll leave links where you can buy these. They're, neither one of these cameras are very expensive. They're both under $100. The list of cameras supported by the surveillance station is huge. We're gonna cover that in a second. But, uh, Let's just dive right into the hardware and some of the options uh, before we get into the software. So this is the one we're using, the Distation DS918 Plus. We have a few hard drives in here, uh, you know, set it up in a RAID, and it's still using all the same features for file sharing and an MVR. It's kind of a nice multi-purpose small business device, uh, which we really like. We've, we've put a lot of these in small businesses and they've worked really well. They also sell, if you want something more dedicated, is the Network Video Recorder, the NVR1218. And these are kind of neat. We haven't reviewed these specifically, but I was noticing that this has the feature of up to 12 cameras, which is only a small couple drive system. Uh, comes with a few camera licenses. We'll get to the license in a second. Um, but this has the HDMI out. Now for larger installs, where, or even if you wanna use multiple cameras on a HDMI display, they do sell the visual station. And this is kind of a neat add-on, so you can buy this Synology NAS or even a larger one, depending on how many cameras you have for an install. And then you get the visual station, which then allows you via a network connection to bring it to a TV and then actually control it from there. So uh, you could have a monitor or a security room where all the cameras are being watched. And this is a really neat feature. Now, licenses. I know this is like a, well, it was confusion uh, with some people and also a point of contention where they're like, I don't wanna have to pay for licenses for everything. The good news, and Synology to me did this right, uh, they do have a license fee, uh, but that license fee is one, one time, two, transferable. I think those are really um, important features. So if I license these cameras on here and then I buy a new Synology, I can transfer the licenses to the other one. I did contact Synology and this is what they told me was done. I actually went to one of their uh, seminars and this is this was a point I wanted to make sure that every time we upgraded uh, a client to a newer, bigger NVR and added more cameras that at least the license we had purchased would come with it. And you do get certain amounts of licenses uh, based on which model you buy. The default, like with our DS918, is only two camera licenses. Uh, we have two cameras hooked up, but the license, place, license pricing on Amazon, and like granted, you can probably find this cheaper uh, elsewhere. I haven't really dug around much. We have vendors that I think on bulk purchases, we've gotten them for less. Uh, but one license is 56, four licenses is 100, bring it down to like $50 license. And then you get a further discount with the eight license here uh, for 359. So not, not unreasonable. And like I said, these are one time per camera uh, that in, as far as I know, changing out the camera, it's a count of cameras that's allowed to be on the system as what you're buying. It doesn't license the camera itself. It just licenses the count of cameras that are on there. Now they have a surveillance station IP camera support list. And this is uh, over 7,100 IP cameras from, I'm sorry, 71,000 from 140 renowned brands. This is a great feature to me because they have so many on the list here. Basically anything that's OMVIF supported, uh, 
seems to be on the list. They have some generic options too, because you can even try ones not on the list and it may work with them as well. So this is kind of nice. Now, the other advantage of this is, and we've seen this happen where we want to retrofit and use some existing IP cameras because they have, you know, a problem with the NVR or they don't like the way the NVR system works. Uh, retrofitting a system and using different cameras that is definitely an option here. Now I will comment, cause I know I've done a lot of Unify videos. So someone's gonna ask, uh, to my knowledge, as of right now in July of 2019, Unify still does not support OMVIF. So uh, there may be ways to make it work, but they're not part of the official support list. Just an FYI for those wondering. And they have more information on their site about the licensing pack. Um, there are a couple weird cameras that are both supported, such as the Axis one, that I even say weird, non-traditional, uh, that may have multiple lenses. And some of those are some edge cases, and they do note that those, even though it's a single camera, because the camera produces more views off of a single camera, it doesn't kind of get you around it. So they're still gonna charge you for the licenses for the views. Uh, that's just one of those things I wanted to mention um, is in here. So let's get into what this system looks like. All right, so let's start with how do you get cameras on here? It's actually pretty simple. I have these two cameras set up already, uh, but if you wanna add the cameras, they have a really simple wizard, add camera. It'll walk you through all the setup options, uh, finding cameras when they're on the same network interface, generic OMVIF, and then from here it can lock onto the camera, go through the settings. If their camera has some special password, because it has such a broad list of camera supports, it'll actually try a lot of the defaults uh, and go in there. So that was really easy to add cameras. It wasn't that big of a deal at all. And because these are both supported, it was really a matter of a couple clicks and they were set up. Now, once you have the camera set up, let's look at the settings on them. So we're gonna edit and they've got edit or edit in batch. So if you wanted to batch perform operations and send a lot of settings to all the cameras, great that they have that. Uh, but you do have the option, of course, just to edit one camera at a time. So I'm gonna go back to edit and choose, we'll edit just the real link first. So device settings, um, video, choose the video format you like, default stage 264. There's gonna be some varied options on here based on possibly what camera you get. Um, audio format, if the camera supports audio, you can set the stream resolution. Uh, if it has multiple stream options, this only has one stream profile. And I set it at the highest res, we set 10 frames a second, but of course it goes up to, and it's gonna vary with models of camera. Uh, bit rate control variables only option, and we wanted the highest image quality on this. It also has some more specific options. Uh, if you want to enable the PTZ by default, this camera, it says PTZ, but this specific camera only has zoom option, but it's still whether or not you want that feature turned on, uh, you control it there. Then we go to record settings. Uh, Pre-record time, post-record time, keep within last days. They give you, like I said, on every individual camera or edit it in batch, uh, you can uh, control the, all the details of the camera. You can set recording schedules how you want these streams to be handled. And it's got balanced versus uh, high quality, low bandwidth. So there's different options when they're setting the streams. Disable recording and rotation or mute audio recording. Those are different options as well. So you can, uh, ticking this option will disable the recording schedule and manual recording. So just like I said, they give you, I, I kind of like the amount of fine grain control you have on there. Same with the live view, how you want the live view settings, balanced, high performance, low bandwidth. And if you have cameras that uh, group too many of them, perhaps you may wanna slow down the bandwidth uh, because maybe they're, you're viewing it remotely. So those are some of the options on there uh, versus you may wanna keep them recording at high quality directly to the NVR for later playback. Optimization, this is kind of neat because it lets you choose by the camera settings or by uh, the surveillance station, so you can force different things on there. And this is gonna vary with camera model how you how this works. So it still allows you to log in when you have the camera set up. You can still log into the cameras and override certain options and let the camera do it because some of the more advanced cameras may have more intelligence within the camera that does a function that you want. So you can let the Sonality station handle all the recording, but the camera still do whatever advanced functions it may have. Uh, it does have, depending on the model of the camera, mirror flip and rotate, uh, which is kind of cool. You can force reboot a uh, camera on a schedule. I think that's kind of neat. Or force restart when camera disconnected. Event detection. Once again, 
this is going to be dependent on camera. Some cameras have their own built-in event detection that will detect whether or not there was a motion uh, event, or you can use the surveillance station to do it. And when you use the surveillance station to do it, you get the options of the detection area and setting it. But that varies on camera when it comes to if you want to do that inside the camera. So a lot of the cameras do offer motion event notifications, like it's built in function of the camera and you can edit inside each camera um, if it supports it, the areas that you want to sense motion. But if the camera doesn't support it, you can do that inside of the surveillance station. We're going to leave it actually set by surveillance station. Nope. If there's IO modules supported, uh, that is on here as well, so you can do that. Now, the other option is we have with the PTZ. So we're going to go to BTZ control. Well, I'll show you what it looks like on a camera that only has zoom. So you can set different options. You can set a patrol, whether you want to do that. And obviously with the camera, would just assume that would be kind of boring, uh, setting just that as an option. But you can control like the PTZ speed, how fast or how slow it, well, in this case, uh, this camera only zooms that we're looking at here. Uh, so you can set it there. But let's look at a camera that has more functionality. And this allows us to set different positions. And how do we add another position? Pretty easy. Test. And then we just move the camera over. Actually, going to will it spin around and look at me. There we go. Here I am. Look at Tom. <laughs> Save. And now you've got one more position. And if you were to set up the patrol, you could set it up to go to these different positions as a patrol. I'm not the hugest fan of the patrol positions and I only bring that up uh, because it seems like they always will miss that event even if you have them set there like, hey, the thing was about to happen. Uh, so we usually recommend for a lot of our clients put more cameras in if they want it because uh, patrolling is kind of, you know, it's a mixed bag. You know, you've seen it in every uh, heist movie where they time the camera because they can see it panning around and things like that. But uh, take that for what it's worth. It's kind of, it's a really cool feature that it does have it. So, yeah, I, this camera works pretty good for this. It does not have zoom, uh, or I could set the zoom options as well. But this one just has it, and this one just has a zoom in and out. So we'll cover that more in a second. All right, so let's jump over to the live view and look what this looks like. So here's the cameras. There's the Rio link sitting here. Now, I can go through and hit the edit button here as well and brings up that same menu so I can adjust the camera and change its settings. So it's actually kind of convenient. Oh, and I'm gonna turn my sound off because it's looping back. Uh, because this camera has audio, when you uh, go on the live view and open the camera specifically and click on it, it will play the sound from that. But this is what's convenient. I can go right here to the Amcrest or the real link and jump to those pre-saved ones. Or if you notice my arrow changes right in the browser. And if I need to make a minor adjustment to the camera, double clicking makes it this full screen. And then the arrow just kind of moves around so we can kind of look at the, you, actually this is what I see. <laughs> you're, you're seeing my view when I look at the camera. <laughs> there you go. Now you're seeing my studio from the other side, which is kind of cool. Now this, because it doesn't have pan to zoom, but it does have a optical zoom. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in with th this camera here. There we go. I can move it over a little because, like I said, this doesn't have the pan to zoom. And you notice it's out of focus, so go in a little more. There we go. And then if we go into the settings, there is a focus option uh, that comes up where I can tell the camera to refocus but it looks like it already, it generally focuses automatically to when you're zooming in and out. It kind of loses focus for a second while it zooms. All right, and there it stops. Yep, and now it's refocused. Now, the other camera, it will do a digital zoom, which I thought was eh, novel. I'm a digital zoom, you're trying to get more pixels where more pixels don't exist, so I'm not a huge fan of digital zoom. Now, even inside of here, you still have all the uh, different options in like the Amcrest only setup or this setup, or you can add options and manage all your views, build them out, which is really, it makes it easy. So if you have this type of view, a six channel, nine channel, 
81 channel, 100 channel view, uh, create camera groups so you can build groups of views. It's very, very flexible in terms of how you want to view it. And of course, having those different views, and we've seen a couple of our clients that have some larger installs, it was really novel seeing they built one for like their kitchen area view versus another view. Uh, this this makes it really handy when you want to go, I need to see everything that happened in this area because of an event. Uh, that's really, really nice the way they give you that level of customization. If you have the patrol option set up, you can uh, do those as well and put the cameras on patrol to watch something as well. So I close this here. Timeline. This is a neat feature for, let's see, Sunday I was here and playing with the camera. So here's Tom goofing with them. But we can jump to certain events when things were going on. We were recording a Sunday morning Linux review. We got a great view of Tony's back of Tony's head here. <laughs> and it lets you see all the events on a timeline so you can see what each camera viewed. Um, I didn't have this one on at the time. I only had the one camera, but it kind of lets you jump back and forth between her. And I think that's a, a, a nice way to do it for the timeline. It's not hard to uh, figure out what happened and when it happened. And of course, how do we export things? Download the complete file, download the video clip. I like that you can pick this instead of having to try to figure out how to edit it later, which is sometimes you have to do with some camera systems. Uh, you can go through and just say, give me the clip from this moment to this moment, because that's the interesting part of the clip. So this does let you export that, just the clip that you want, because we don't want to watch eight minutes or 10 minutes of video. We want the 20 seconds of what happened and how it happened, uh, and that's it. It does give you that level of customization. It also lets you seek certain moments, uh, all recording modes, show events only versus show all clips. So lots of customization depending on how you've set the camera record up so you can replay back everything. We can see what it looks like with night vision with these particular cameras. Like I said, I'll be doing a review of these later, uh, but it will record and show you what each camera is doing and you can synchronize uh, camera groups up so when you're doing the playback, that's an option. Now it does have just a review the recordings option. So it just has kind of like a raw, here's the recordings. Here's the recordings we have for this. Uh, it's recording now, the Amcrest recording. So pretty straightforward on that. Uh, export options, mount options. And if you didn't know, uh, add a task to mount. It actually has options to move files around and archive recordings, set archive options. So you can say archive these videos and if you have something else to send the archival to, it does have that, which is really nice uh, for people to have to figure out how to keep stuff uh, for certain amounts of time and figure out where to store all that data. So last thing I'll talk about is the app. And I thought the app was really cool on Surveillance Station. Uh, Couple things about it. One, it does work if you don't have any port forwarding because you can register your Synology with the uh, Synology Quick Connect and then use the Quick Connect to log into the app. Um, I'm using it under local IP and we did find it to be faster if you do port forwarding, just FYI. Um, but let's look at the app itself. So the Synology app supports the same views as you have. So you can see the cameras, you can look at an individual camera and it's relatively fast actually which one am I moving yep I'm moving the right one <laughs> um, it's relatively fast there is like a little bit of a delay between the recording by the time it gets back to my phone here uh, but when you're on the cameras you can also hit the pan tilt zoom option so you can move the camera around and uh, get it to that proper position that you're looking for and this is definitely Really, I, I like this a lot for, especially for if you want to set up a surveillance system at your house, uh, that's really cool. You can still get notifications, review the recordings, uh, set up options and things like that. There's a lot of customization you can do in here. And one more feature that is specific to the app being on your phone is home mode. And what home mode does, and we're gonna talk about geofencing, which is showing my shop right now, cause that's where I'm at. Um, 
So we can set the radius of home mode. And what this can do is you can customize the functionality of the system to say, when I'm home, I don't need notifications because it's gonna notify me that I'm home. But then as soon as you leave, it automatically goes, that phone that has the app is not there anymore. Uh, so now we need to turn on notifications because you're not home. This is, it can be timed to do this. Obviously in the customization schedule, you can time it to do different things, but this way allows it to do a automated system for you. And once again, it doesn't require Synology to do this. It requires you in the phone and home mode. And as I see Synology do this, I see Synology as in you're not sending all your data to them. You're not doing uh, something that requires some cloud enabled thing. The app is talking to this Synology device. Uh, that is something I like about this whole surveillance system in general is some of them are too cloud enabled for the home. And I, you know, we've seen times and there's a couple companies got in trouble for having all of your recordings and letting too many people see them. And that makes you a little nervous. Uh, this is all self-contained. It doesn't need to go out to the internet to uh, send a bunch of data to Synology. It's not sending your recordings to Synology at all. It's all stored locally here. Um, but, you know, combine this with the app, I think you got a really great tool. And in terms of documentation, including specifically like this home mode and how it works, Synology's done a great job with documentation. So you can do a little bit of searching and their Synology Support Center has a ton of different, everything from help topics to tutorials of how to set and configure a lot of this stuff up. Um, we have found them to be very intuitive. I've not really found myself going into the support at all. And I do wanna dig into some of the more features uh, that this offers and maybe I'll do that in a later video because uh, there are a few things that I wanna try out like time-lapse mode and um, some other things that might be really cool to have. So my overall impression is uh, we really like this device. We've got clients using it. I'm gonna be doing some deployment follow-up videos uh, for systems that we've got deployed and how we have them set up and what cameras we use. I will be reviewing these cameras separately, but I'll leave links to them. Uh, they're not bad, but I'm gonna show you when I do the review, like their overall performance in a couple different situations, including uh, their night performance, day performance, and get into the details and we'll be using them here on the Surveillance State Synology Surveillance Station. Like I said, I'll leave links below to where you can get all this fun stuff. Uh, they are some affiliate links, so they do help out the channel if you wanna purchase them through that. Uh, check out the Synology NVR finder and camera list to see if maybe existing cameras you have are already supported by this, but uh, it's the list, like I said, with 71,000 cameras on the list, there's a lot of supported cameras on there. Uh, so it's very likely that if you've had cameras made in the last few years that they're supported. And there are ways that you can um, ad adapt like older style cameras to this with different devices uh, that do recording such as Vivotech system. And this will take those BNC style cameras and adapt them to IP, but please note that if you get something like this because it's bringing in eight camera streams it does require eight licenses because there are eight cameras on there but either way it's it's an option if you want to retrofit uh, existing systems we have a client that was asking about this because they have some cameras that are not bad even though they're older bnc and they don't want to rip and replace everything they'd like to uh get a system that can still record on some of those cameras until they get around to upgrading them and once again Synology makes it easy to support a mixed mode of cameras where you have these older cameras that are existing, you get some newer, nicer cameras, or even some really high-end cameras and mix and mode whatever you want because, well, there's a lot of options out there and there's a lot of scenarios when you try to look at how you're gonna plan out your surveillance system. You wanna make sure uh, you have a system that supports all of it. So like I said, huge thumbs up on this device. Uh, the clients have been running it for a while are happy. The new deployments that we've done recently, uh, our clients have been ecstatic about it. It's really brought them a uh, good visibility into some of the um, venues that they wanted to keep an eye on. And like I said, I'll be doing a video about the planning and deployment we did for a recent client. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.